Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager, and we're going to talk specifically this week on how to manage your devices using Profile Manager. Now, if this is the first uh, screencast you've seen in our series on server, uh, you might want to go back to the start. We've done several other uh, screencasts on Profile Manager, including how to set it up, how to get your devices into Profile Manager, uh, and then how to uh, manage uh, your users and groups and those sorts of things using the Profile Manager interface. And so today we're going to take a look at the last part of that interface, and that is how to manage your devices. So again, if you haven't seen those screencasts yet, you might want to go back and do that. Now, here I am in Profile Manager in the server application, and to get to Profile Manager, I would just click on this little button here uh, to pull it up. Now, I've already got uh, the screen uh, up there, so I'm just going to pull this up so we can take a look at it. And this is the Profile Manager interface. And as I showed in a previous screencast, I showed how to enroll a Mac and how to enroll an iOS device. Uh, into the service. And so you can see on the side here we've got devices and device groups. Now depending on how you want to manage your devices, you can either manage them on an individual basis through this interface or you can do them as groups where you might set up uh, groups of Macs. Let's uh, say for instance maybe you've got one lab of Macs that you have and you might want to manage it by uh, your different labs or maybe your different classes if you're in education or maybe if you've uh, got kids in your household you might want to manage a kids device group. Uh, it's up to you on how you want to do that. So what I'm going to do is just show you uh, some of the settings here uh, for the devices and show you how to actually change some of those settings manually uh, just to give you a feel for how that works. So here we are for uh, my MacBook Pro. You can see I've got that right here. I've got three tabs, About, Settings, and Activity. Now let's just look at the About tab for a minute. On this tab here, uh, it comes in really handy because it gives us a lot of information. Uh, for instance, it tells me the capacity of this particular machine, uh, what software version I'm using, uh, gives me my build version for the software, and then my serial number and who the user is. So if you ever needed to find your serial number in a hurry, this is a great way to do that. I've also got details on my UDID for the machine, uh, my Ethernet MAC address, Wi-Fi MAC address, Bluetooth, uh, it's got my model number, uh, so if I ever need to know my model number of my machine, uh, I can look it up here. Uh, the last time that I've checked in with the machine, and then my available uh, space on the machine, and whether it's on Do Not Disturb or the personal hotspot is on. So I get a lot of information here that just kind of gives shows me what uh, what's happening with my machine. So what I'm going to do is let me just uh, close this for a second so I can show you down here. Uh, you'll notice I've also got a security area here, which uh, tells me whether File Vault is enabled or whether my personal recovery key and all of that is set up. And let me just close this to go down. Uh, I've also got restrictions down here as well, and it can show the different restrictions that I have set up on this particular machine and the things I can or can't do. Uh, that information is just kind of right there. And then I can show the installed applications. And so it'll show me all of the different installed applications that I've got on this machine, which can come in handy if you just want to kind of know what's there. And uh, let's see. Then I've got my in-device groups. If I'm in any groups, which I'm not right now because I haven't set up any device groups over here, but it would show that there if they are. And then any certificates I've got on the machine. So it shows me which certificates have been added to this machine um, from uh, you know from my server. So some of it's from my server, some of it is the Kerberos certificates, those kinds of things. I can see all of that information right here. Let me just pop this down. And let's go back up to the top here. So that gives me a lot of information about the particular machine I'm looking at in all of these, let me close this, in all these various categories here. Then I've also got on the end here activity, and this shows any activity that's happened uh, with this machine. And you can see I've enrolled this device here. It says my uh, one enrollment succeeded, and it tells me when I enrolled and at what time. As I make changes to the settings here, and those changes get pushed to this machine, it will show when those changes have shown up and when those changes have taken effect. Uh, so it gives me a lot of that uh, information right there. And then as I've shown in a previous screencast down here under the uh, cogwheel here, I can actually lock, wipe, rename, update info, uh, that kind of stuff for this particular machine right from the Profile Manager interface, which again is a web interface, so I can pull this up anywhere I want to. But let's go into the settings right now, and I want to show you um, how you can edit specific settings for your MacBook Pro. If I just click on Edit here, uh, I get this nice screen that allows me to edit the various settings on my machine. And you can see I've got some OS 10 and iOS settings here. I've got iOS uh, 
settings down here, and then I've got uh, OS 10 settings. Now, because I'm on a MacBook Pro, the iOS settings aren't going to do me any good, so there's really no reason to configure those. Uh, this is just for uh, uniformity that these will be the same whenever you look at different devices and device groups. Now, in my previous screencast on users and groups, I covered in detail all of these various settings. And what the difference is now is that these settings will be taking place on a machine basis, not on a user basis. So that if this same user, if I only managed them by machine, if this same user logged into another machine other than my MacBook Pro, none of the settings that I've done for that machine are going to work on the other machine for that user. So you can manage settings by machine or by user. It's up to you. But if it's by user, no matter what machine they log into then that I'm managing in Profile Manager, their user settings will take effect. So I'm not going to go into detail on each of these. Like I said, I will refer back to that other screencast if you want to see each and every one of these screens and what they do. Uh, but I've done that before. So what I'm going to do is just go over some of the specifics related to devices here. Uh, that are different. Uh, one of the differences is the directory right here. If I just uh, click on configure, uh, I can actually set up the uh, directory that I want this machine to use. So I can put in my server's host name, my username and password, a client ID uh, if I've got one, and I can actually then uh, cause this machine to be bound to that particular open directory. So if I just put in my you know server.toddoltoff.com in here, then it would bind the mach this machine to that uh, directory. Now, mine's already uh, been bound because I did that in an earlier screencast, but that is something that I can add here if I wanted to do that if I was configuring a new machine. Uh, the other thing I can do is configure the login window uh, here. I can put what I want to show on the login uh, window. I can say show uh, additional information in the uh, menu bar. Uh, which is going to show the host name, the OS 10 version, the IP address when the menu bar is clicked. I can set that up if I want to. I could put a banner message in here that's displayed on login prompt. You know, something like, uh, hey boys, your dad's watching, so remember that. Or, you know, whatever you want to put in here, you can put a message that will show up on that login screen. I can also set up what I want to do with the login prompt. I can just say the name and password text fields will show up. Or I can say list the uh, users able to log into these computers. And I can say show local, show mobile accounts, show network users. Uh, you know, uh, computers administrator show other. And I can have the show the sleep, restart, and shutdown buttons on there as well. And so this show uh, network users is nice if you got a number of users and instead of having to uh, put in the username and information, if you just wanted their, um, their icons to show up on the screen, you could check this and they'll show up if, if you have local network users that can log into the particular machine. Uh, I've got other options here for the login window. I can show the password hint, disable automatic login. Uh, again, all of this differ different information that I could set up here. Uh, when to start the screensaver and that stuff. And then on access, I can say um, allow the users and groups that can log in on this computer. So I can limit it and say even though I've got network users that technically could log into this computer, I might want to limit it to certain users that are only allowed to do that. Or users that can't log into the computer uh, as well. And so, to get, again, I can kind of customize these settings on who has access. And then I can also just run certain login scripts. If i got scripts that I want to have run when you log in, I can actually put the script in here, just upload it, and those scripts will run every time a user logs in. So maybe if it's a backup script or whatever I want to do, I can put that in there. All right, all this other information, like I said, I've covered before. Uh, another dif difference is software update. And so uh, I showed you in the software update screencast how to set that up. If you automatically want to point... Uh, your uh, machine to your server for software updates because you're running that service on OS 10 server. You can do that right in here just by following this link example right here and replacing server.example.com with your server's name. And then basically all of the um, software updates will look to your server instead of Apple servers to update. Uh, I've also can change energy saver preferences, which is different uh, for devices. You don't have this on the user on a user level. Um, because it's per machine. So I can set the sleep options in here. Uh, I can set the portable uh, options as well when it's on battery or power adapter, how I want the machine to behave in terms of saving uh, battery. Uh, I can also do a schedule here on when to start the computer and when to sleep the computer. Uh, again, all of this is in system preferences, but I can actually do those settings from here so my users don't have to go in and fiddle with it. Uh, I can also set up time machine from here and just point it to uh, where I want to point the uh, server, to whichever time machine server I've got. So again, if I'm backing up to server, I can put my server's information and address in here. And then I can specify kind of how I want those backups to happen. And then I can even put a backup size limit uh, on here. So maybe I don't, so it doesn't take up all of my disk space. I can limit the size right in here too if I want to. 
Uh, and then certain paths to skip. You know, if there's certain, uh, you know, drives or certain folders that I don't need to have backed up, I can add those in here as well. So again, really nice to be able to customize it. Uh, and then I've got the XSAN uh, back up here. Again, if you're using an XSAN um, you know, network setup, you can put that information in here. Most people won't be using that, but it's still here uh, just in case you're using that right there. And then finally, again, you can do your own custom settings if you want to put in property list values and stuff in here. So that kind of gives you a rundown of the specifics related to this machine. But again, you can actually set all of these other things that we covered in the users and groups area for your machine as well. I'm going to click cancel just to leave it alone so none of that information will show up here. Uh, but I can do that both for the Mac and for iOS devices as well. And the setup uh, for that is the same. It would just be the iOS settings that I would be using for that particular device. So let's talk about device groups for a minute so you can see how to manage those. You see when I go to it for the first time, I don't have any uh, device groups. Uh, so what I can do is add a device group. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this group, um, you know, Max. I'll say uh, Mac Computers. Let's call it that. And so that's going to be the name of my particular um, group right here. And you can see I don't have any, uh, any device groups there. Uh, again, I can manage it almost the same, right? I've got settings. I've got apps that I can add uh, to the machine. If I have enterprise apps, uh, I have books I can add to the machine. If I've got enterprise books, again, similar things I covered in the overview. Uh, members of this group and then any activity. Now, right now, I don't have anything like that. So let me do this. Let me add one more, uh, one more group over here. And so let's go ahead and save those changes. And then this group I'm going to call uh, iOS devices. Okay, so there's my iOS devices group. Now what I need to do is add uh, some, some devices to here. So I'm just going to click the plus, and I'm going to say add device. And I'm going to add my uh, iPhone here to the iOS group and say done. And so now you see it shows my iPhone in there. And then i got to save the changes. And then in the Mac area here, I'm going to add a device. And I'm going to add my MacBook Pro and say done. And so now that's been added, and I just click Save down here, and now that's in there. So now I've got that member uh, in the group right there. You can see here's About. Uh, again, this device group isn't in any other groups, but you can see the members there. And that's how I would do that. And then I could go about managing uh, by groups instead. So if I had a bunch of devices, I could add them to these groups. And then if I just click Edit on the settings here, I get the Edit window again, and then I can manage uh, by using the settings and things that I covered already for the individual devices. I'm just going to click Cancel. So that gives you an idea of how to set up those, uh, those groups. Again, um, you know, in terms of settings and things, that's about the same. Uh, but it gives you an idea of how to do that, where you can manage either by devices or in device groups or by users and groups. Uh, it's up to you on how you want to manage those things and set those up. But at least this gives you an idea how to make that work. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.